Well, today, Drew Peterson's attorneys get their chance to present evidence in the hearsay hearing. It appears they may now call two witnesses. Defense attorney Karen Conti joins us now with more. Now, we don't exactly know who those two will be, other there's some speculation. What, what does this mean to you, reading into this, the fact they're only going to call two people to the witness stand? Well, I don't think the defense wants to show its complete hand, because uh, when they go to the real trial, they want to surprise the prosecution with the testimony. But they really do have to put a good foot forward here, because it's very important for the prosecution to get this hearsay evidence in. There is no hard evidence here, and so if the prosecution loses this case, this pretrial case, I think the prosecution has real trouble. So, you know, they're going to call the pathologist, we heard, but that's, that's what we're understanding, and, and that pathologist is probably going to say this was an accident, consistent with an accident, all of the evidence, um, and, and I don't know who else they're going to call. Well, you know, we've been reporting that the uh, issue of whether it was a blue barrel uh, that's involved with this or a blue tub might be uh, pertinent to the case. Could that make a difference in a case like this? It doesn't sound to me that it does. I think this judge has probably made up his mind or at least has a good idea of what he wants to do. With 66 witnesses, 80 hours of testimony, this judge has an idea whether he's going to find that it's more probably true than not true that Drew Peterson killed Stacy and killed Kathleen. I, I don't know that anything the prosecution is going to do is going to change but that. But what does that say, though, in terms of what hearsay may be allowed into this case and what might not be allowed into well, this case? Well, we don't know. There are approximately 15 or so statements that are very relevant uh, to, to this case and the judge is probably going to keep his secret. We heard that this morning and that would be a good thing for the judge to do because let's just say the judge is going to uh, allow the testimony in and let's just say that well, the judge is going to make a ruling that we, I think that Drew Peterson killed the both of these women. Well then the jury when they ultimately decide the case is going to be confused. How could a judge find right. him guilty and then not, what am I supposed to do? So I think it's good the judge will keep this under seal. Well and that, that begs the question then when you think about what you just said it's like a catch-22 because no matter what, if this evidence is allowed in, then that proves that the judge believes that he did, in fact, silence a witness in order for the testimony to be to be read aloud, right? Uh, exactly. But, I mean, basically what the idea is, we don't want to give Drew... If Drew Peterson killed these women to silence their testimony, let's just say that that's what we believe and that's what we know and that's what's proven, that means that he doesn't get the benefit of the constitutional right to confront your witness. We're, we're not going to make a guy who did a bad act to silence a witness get the benefit of the law. And that's the basis of it. So if you look at it that way, it does make some sense. But wouldn't you have to prove first that he's the one who did, in fact, silence the witness? Of course, because otherwise the whole law wouldn't apply. It is a very circular argument. Uh, and, and it has been upheld in the U.S. Supreme Court. A very similar case uh, has been help, held up. So I, I, I don't know. Everyone's talking about this being a, a, a law that's going to be stricken down. And I just don't see that it is. And if it does go through and some of this evidence is allowed into the case as an attorney, how good does that make the prosecution's case to get a conviction? A heck of a lot better because we don't have hard evidence here. We don't have an eyewitness. We don't have blood. We don't have DNA. We don't have any of those things that jurors want to see in a case. So if, if there's all this testimony that he threatened, he said, you know, he wants to hire somebody to kill somebody, you know, all of those things are going to be very, very crucial to a jury. How will the appeals process work? The appeal will happen after the whole case is tried. So let's say, say the judge is going to allow this stuff in right now. The case will f continue to go to trial. Then afterwards, both parties, you know, the defense will appeal. And if the prosecution gets a bad verdict uh, on a ruling, the okay. prosecution can appeal. Okay. Thank you, Karen Connie. Always good to have you. Let, let's, get, let's give up Drew Peterson for Lent. What do you say? <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people agree with that. I'll tell you that much. Thank, Thank you, Karen. you so much.